Mark your calendars this Sunday night, June 6th, three Beach Music Legends perform together here at the Palace Theater and Performing Arts Center in Myrtle Beach. You'll meet the Palace's Executive Director, coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the Palace Theater and Performing Arts Center. We're focused on this Sunday night's three Beach Music Legends concert to be held here at 5.30. And we're visiting with Julia Mays, the Executive Director. Good morning, Julia. Good morning, Greg. Thank you for having me. Thanks so much for coming in. It's so exciting to think we're now five days away from a performance of which I guess the, the uh, Performing Arts the, uh, Center has ne never seen. That's correct. That's correct. We're very excited about it. Very excited. And to help wrap up uh, the Sun Fun Festival, which kicks off tomorrow night and will be running through the weekend and into early Monday, it's a pretty exciting thing. It is. To know a central focal point of the area, like the Palace Theater, will be uh, helping wrap it up. Yes. It'll be exciting. Well, we're in, and we're in the parade also so and then we'll end up here on Sunday so it'll be very exciting when you say we're in the parade is that primarily the spirit of the dance or is that uh, uh, the, the beach music performers actually or? no the beach music performers will be uh, they are grand marshals honorary grand marshals for the parade right. so they'll be riding on our float the palace theater float and so we're very excited about that also you've got to be that is yeah. huge I had no idea and a great way to co-promote for folks who buy tickets at the last sure. minute to co-promote uh, this Sunday night's performance. That's correct. Have you, have you seen these guys perform before? I have. I've seen all of them, actually, um, many times. Um, I don't want to give away my age, but I go <laughs> way back to Maurice Williams and oh, yeah. Stay and Little Darlin. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. He's an amazing performer. He was with us yesterday and the day before. We were actually at our Fox 43 studio with Maurice and the excitement of seeing him talk about performances as small as a group of five to as large as 5,000 and many, many thousand more, and the excitement for him to get on stage this Sunday night here at the Palace Theater. I don't think he's ever performed here. Um, I don't know that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't think he's ever performed here. And hearing him talk about the thrill of being here in a setting like this, of course, right in the heart of Myrtle Beach, which, he's, which he has performed so many times, it's right. just an incredibly exciting for him. Well, we're honored to have all of them here. All of them. Very, Very honored, so. Real quick about yourself, Julie. You're originally from the area? I am from Miami, Florida, born oh, and raised. Yeah. Yep. Another. I do have relatives up in the Carolinas and part Cherokee Indian, so I, th I think I have a little attachment here. That somehow. you do, very definitely. Surely to North Carolina and mm -hmm. I, in both states. So you're in a perfect setting now. I guess folks from the Carolinas have been coming to Myrtle for so long. Where were your family up in this area based? Um, out of probably in, in North Carolina area. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have any here now, but. Right. Uh, Past. Do you still get down to Miami often? Not so much in Miami, but um, over on the west coast of Florida, uh -huh. which is where my daughter and granddaughters live. And right. Good. So, yeah, I get there a lot. You, you spent virtually all your life in Florida, or have you spent too much of it here in the Carolinas? Um, I've actually only been in the Carolinas for the last three and a half years. Is that right? That's correct. Yes. And so, previous to that, most in Florida. In Florida. Son of a gun. What brought you to the Carolinas in the first place three and a half years ago? Three and a half years ago, uh, Mr. King, our now owner of the Palace Theater, mm -hmm. um, is, um, was with Spirit of the Dance. He owned and created Spirit of the Dance. Right. And I was their public relations person on, the tu on tour for them. Okay. And so we got to know David very well. Uh, this was their headquarters at the time. They rented this out from John Q. Hammonds. Right. And um, my other half and I came in as a management team, and he asked us to run the theater. And because of our past knowledge and experience in theater business, right. um, that's how we got here. So I, kind of, I wasn't aware of that. So you ended up here in Myrtle Beach. Uh, and, 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 of course, Spirit of the Dance has been, uh, been around a heck of a long time. Yes, they have. Um, actually, nine years. Nine years. Internationally, yes. How many troops or how many groups uh, travel uh, and perform, whether around the country or around the world? Well, we have eight troops around the world. Eight. And we actually have five troops here in the North America. Okay. And that's what we handle from here also, uh, being our headquarters. Mm -hmm. So we have four troops that we call sit-down. Um, and sit-down means we have a troop here that stays in the Carolinas at the Palace Theater. We play here. We have a separate troop that plays out in Vegas at the mm -hmm. Golden Nugget. Mm -hmm. We have another troupe that plays in Reno 
at the El Dorado, mm -hmm. and we have one that plays in Branson, Missouri, at our theater there. That's another theater that uh, King had, or David King had purchased. That's correct. Okay. It's the old Bobby Benton Theater. Is that yeah, right? Oh, that Bobby must be Benton exciting. Theater. Yeah, they used to alternate. Um, they actually used to alternate um, playing Spirit of the Dance, and then Bobby would come out and entertain and do his his dig. Sure. And um, he just finally got a little tired. He loved Spirit of the Dance, mm -hmm. and he got tired of worrying about the air conditioning not working. And he said, "That's it. I want to go entertain." Right. So right. back on tour he went. Fantastic. And you all got the AC fix. And we got the AC fix, and we <laughs> worry about that now. What about, what about the spirit of the dance is so exciting and gets folks coming back year after year and performance after performance, whether it's here, Reno, Vegas, or Branson, or the other four troops around the world? I think what keeps spirit of the dance um, very fresh is just that. Mr. King um, is very um, adamant about keeping things very fresh. And David happens to be a music composer. Oh. So what he's done with Spirit, which unlike the other two um, other competitors, which is Lord of the Dance and River Dance, okay. which are very traditional Irish, um, what we do is we take ours and he puts he rearranges the Celtic music to the likes of the Rolling Stones and the Beatles, oh. and that's kind of what makes it a, a bit different from the rest. Um, and we are constantly changing it, putting in new routines, and uh, it's not just Irish anymore. Right. So that's what keeps it nice and, and uh, fresh and going. Now, has there been some level of camaraderie with the other two? I mean, does David King recognize those and possibly even, uh, have they ever been to the palace, for instance? I believe Riverdance was here prior to us coming in and renting the theater. Okay. Um, I believe they've been here and did extremely well. Right, right. And we've, we've actually had conversation with them ab about approximately bringing them in. And yeah. absolutely, there's, uh, they, are, they are excellent at what they do. And right. they're top notch. And, um, but they're di it's a different show. Sure. So, sure, we, we'd love to negotiate a deal with them. Yeah, bring that, them back. that could be exciting. I, 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 of course, I, I think I knew the River Dance had performed here. That's what made me think about it. I thought, golly, but, but that was well before uh, uh, David King purchased in the facility. That's this correct. has turned out to be a perfect setup for mm -hmm. you all for the North American headquarters. For everybody. For everybody and for the, just for the community here. It's mm -hmm. a very big deal, we think. Mm -hmm. Now, the... the, the Four troops that perform, the other four that are non, you said, sit-down? We call them sit-downs, non, where they stay. Right, sure, of course. Mm -hmm. For the other four that are non-sit-down locations, are they travel around the world? or I have one troop that tours right. here, in North Amer and here in the North America, mm -hmm. and the other four sit here. And then we have two over across the sea. Okay. Um, over in London, they, I, we just got finished doing the China tour. Um, they're now going to Switzerland, so they're everywhere. Wow, yes. And David King is based in the UK? He, in London. Okay, That's correct. Great. Does he get over a good bit? He gets over quite a bit. Yeah. He likes Myrtle Beach. I'm he sure. likes Myrtle yeah. Beach, absolutely. Yeah. It's an exciting place, and of course, for folks who, for a viewer who's not been down to the show, if you were one of our viewers in the PD or in southeastern North Carolina, the show, the show consists of, a, is it a couple hours of, of just that, uh, performing to the, to the likes of music like the Rolling Stones or otherwise? What? It's, still, it's still a bit of Celtic music, mm -hmm. um, but it's just an upbeat. It's a rock and roll presentation, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think when people come, they can really enjoy um, the, the lighting, the, the uh, intense dancing. Mm -hmm. uh, our dancers... I think, and of course I'm a bit prejudiced, but I think they're the best um, I've ever seen. Really? And I've seen a lot. Oh, yeah? Uh, they're energetic. Uh, when you come out of there, it's just like a, a Honda commercial. You go, yes! Oh, and yeah. um, that's pretty exciting. That is, that is. Growing up down in, in, in Florida, was there anything like that? Or had, uh, there was an experience that you had uh, gotten involved in, uh, whether it was later in your career or earlier in career, that got you interested in being involved with a group like Spirit of the Dance? Um, actually, my uncle uh, played on Broadway with Frank Lesser, wow. um, one of the old um, directors and producers, as probably people my age one might know <laughs> and that's how actually how I got into theater and performing arts mm -hmm. was well, through your uncle through my uncle did you travel up to see him often on Broadway I saw quite a few plays when I and and Broadway productions when I was um, 12 and 12 through 16 right. and then I had to go to work so aha uh -huh. yes it kicks in at some point yes it does, yes, it does. And down in Florida I think I saw Julia, that you've been involved with, is it the Barbara Mann Hall Performing Arts Hall? The Barbara B. Mann Performing Arts Hall okay. in Fort Myers, Florida. That's um, in Fort Myers. I spent 12 years there. 
12 years. 12 years, mm hmm Had you been in the industry? Of, I had not. Okay, I wow. had not. Prior to that, I was in the savings loan business. Is that right? And, um, did a complete change. Yeah, an as a lot of people segue. do. Yeah. How did you do that? Um, I really got when the savings and loans, uh, and I was with savings and loans for 21 years. 21. 21 years. years. From birth. From birth, just about. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> and actually, um, it, when they deregulated in nine, eight, 1981, which a lot of people will probably be familiar with. Oh, yeah. um, it went into securities and bonds, et cetera, and it got very boring, mm -hmm. uh, and I needed something a little more, so I started my own company, Marketing and Sales. Is that right? And that's how I actually got into the performing arts. Okay, great, sure. Well, what were some of the highlights of that experience there at the Barbara Mann Performing Arts Hall? Um, I can tell you a very funny story. Yeah, please. Um, that, and, and, which made my claim to fame, so to speak, in the industry and made me extremely well known with the um, with the actors actresses and Broadway itself actually uh, we did the opening the national tour for my fair lady starring Richard Chamberlain oh wow and Barry and Fran Weisler who happened to be very famous producers um, were uh, brought them in and they were there the week prior to the show opening yeah. rehearsing and and getting ready and Richard Chamberlain did a wonderful interview for us out in front of the Barbara Mann Performing Arts Hall. We did it with a it was CBS affiliate. Right. Um, it was very well done. I was on the end where we satellited it from, obviously, the main station. And we were standing there, and we could hear his answers, but we could not hear the questions. Mm. And, of course, the uh, one of the questions was immediately thrown in without being screened um, and asked if he was gay. And he had just come out of the closet, so to speak, and he was very proud of that. And instead of answering yes, he answered no. And when he got finished with the entire interview, he came up, he thanked his press agent and myself and said, thank you very much, went and locked himself into the dressing room and wouldn't come out for four hours. Wow. When the producers heard this and found out, they were so mad um, he was so mad because he didn't answer the proper way that he said he was not going to tour anymore. He wasn't going to rehearse. He was very upset, and that was that. And here's, we haven't even started the national tour yet. My so God. it took approximately half an hour for that to get around the industry, and everybody knew exactly who I was in this little teensy town of Fort Myers. No, Julia, yeah. <laughs> so Richard Chamberlain and I were were very popular. <laughs> so that was my claim to fame. He really did come out of his dressing room yeah. about five hours later, um, and the president of our company called me and said, welcome to show business. <laughs> right. Wow, so. Julia, yes. Yeah. It's, it was the CBS affiliate. You had no, obviously had no idea what was coming on there. You I just did not heard the answers. Yeah. That's right. Uh, we just heard Who the was answers. asking the questions? The, the, somebody from the local. CBS it was, and in, in, right. in defense of the local station, they they screened them. Uh -huh. However, this guy just he threw in the question like right in between his two questions. Wow. So. That's incredible. That is something you'll never forget. That is something I'll never forget. And But we did open the tour, yeah. and it was very, very successful. And, you know, sometimes bad publicity is, That's is right. as good as good publicity. It so. sure is, just it getting works. that name out, yeah. very definitely. And Absolutely. Of course, the Barbara yeah. Mann Performing Arts Hall has been there a, a heck of a long time. Yes, it's it been has. open and, and had a national acts just like that. That's uh, correct. For many, many years. That must yeah. have been exciting. How about some other great stories of other than the, <laughs> the Richard Chamberlain? Well, Les Mis. Um, Les Mis was a put probably put the Barbara Mann Performing Arts Hall on the map. Mm -hmm. uh, we had connections with uh, Providence Performing Arts Center in Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, that was our, our our headquarters at the time for my company. And the Barbara Mann Performing Arts Hall, a lot of people didn't know who they were. And Les Mis at the time, Les Miserables, whom we had here, right. um, was only traveling for week-long performances. Huh. So you couldn't buy a split week. You had to go with the full week. Right. We weren't sure we could really do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were scheduled to have them in February, which is was prime time for us in Florida. Mm -hmm. And um, they had a cancellation, and they had to throw us in June. Now, for South Carolina, that would have been a wonderful time. Right. However, in Florida, June is no a dead month. Sure. Well, we sold out eight performances of Les Mis in June. You were kidding. In Fort Myers, and 
rather put us on the map. So that yeah, was good. That's yeah. incredible, that's which incredible. is a relatively small market. When you talk it about, is. I mean, Fort Myers, of course, there are a heck of a lot of folks visiting there in, um, in, in what's called the own season. I mean, what's that like? Is, well, we call them six-month residents. Right. Um, and you probably have a little bit of that here, mm -hmm. I understand. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Although a lot of the people in, in South Carolina here, I understand, stay for maybe three months or two months. So you do have a little more transition at this time. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we had six-month residents, and um, their time frame was from, from uh, after the turkey was put on the table mm -hmm. until about the end of April. Well, how'd you fill up eight nine, eight performances, get that sold out in June? I went to people like yourself and tried to get on every program I could possibly get on. And yeah. we took people backstage to show them what went on backstage, because that's important also. Right. And um, had the newspaper, we had everybody. So I does, think the media helped yeah, us a, what, awful What does lot. go on? I mean, you know, for viewers uh, who've ne who haven't been to shows or haven't been down to the palace, of course, the thrill is to try to get them in this Sunday night, for the, sure. as well as so many of the performances you all put on the Broadway series, which kicked off recently and is uh, going so strong. But the excitement for, for folks, what, what does go on behind the scenes? Obviously, it depends on the show. It's but, amazing. Uh, I know when we come as customers, when we come as patrons to the theater, mm -hmm. We sit in our seats, we buy the ticket, and, and we're ready to be entertained. Um, but what goes on prior to that entertainment is uh, so many things that make it happen. Um, at the backstage, your stagehands and your um, choreographers and, and the sets that have to be put together, it's just incredible. Oh, yeah. It's absolutely oh, yeah. incredible. And I, I wish I could take everybody backstage before seeing the performance because people would get a, a better understanding and, a, and, a, and it'd be more exciting for them. Mm -hmm. But um, there's a lot that goes on. Do you all ever have school groups come in, for instance, Julia? We do. Julia? Les Mis has, um, well, Les Mis produced a lot of uh, school groups. Right. You mean as patrons? As patrons and both to come behind the scenes to well, check things out, yeah, to get a absolutely. feel of what the world's like. We do uh, Les Miserables and Stomp think uh, at Greece coming up, which right. is going to be a fantastic one. They it's do actual uh, mm -hmm. school studies. Great. And, um, and we are able to give the teachers a, a, a study guide. Uh -huh. And they have all kinds of things that help them with the culture of how that was made up. It's because it's, it's sound, it's lights, it's, it's cameras, it's, right. it's everything that goes into making any program. And it's a necessity. So it enlightens them, it educates them. Sure. And I think in that case, it makes it more exciting for the, for the young people to come in oh, yeah. and see what happens after all of this. For a viewer who may be a teacher and know a teacher, if they wanted to learn more about that, could they call the palace here? Who would they want to ask for to, um, to learn about that program? At okay. some point in time, we are going to actually have a, a situation where we can take groups and, and take them for a tour right. and actually let them know what's going on, educate them. Sure. And eventually, they'll probably be able to call our stage people. Okay. Uh, we haven't quite set that program right. up and put it into effect in South Carolina yet, mm -hmm. but as soon as we do, we'll absolutely let you know. The world's most popular musical, Les Miserables, was here just a yes. couple of months ago. Yes, it was. Uh, to a, a huge, I, guess, I assume, a sellout crowd over absolutely. and over and over. And uh, to think about being in a setting, of course, we're here in the lobby of the Palace Theater and Performing Arts Center, but to think about a setting like this, 2,700 seats, and just think of that selling out like we expect to do this Sunday night's performance, knowing that these crowds are coming performance after performance and to see that and just to know what all happened behind the stage as well as up on the scene. How is that for you, Julia? It's exciting and sometimes I have gray hair from it. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look like it, yeah. But um, absolutely, it's, uh, it is very exciting. And the night of the show, and, and especially opening night, right. is probably the most exciting for me oh. uh, to see what we've done, all the things that we've done, and to see it all come together. Mm -hmm. That's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. April 30th, I was here for Jerry Seinfeld's performance, which was Wasn't un that fun? unbelievable. Yeah. That was incredible. Of course, to have acts like that coming to the palace, that, that's an act that folks will travel states to sure. get to. I mean, if they're not here already vacationing, they will travel from states to get to a performance like that. That must be exciting, getting folks like it that It is. We, we want the Palace Theater and Performing Arts Center to be the community's performing arts. Uh, we want to offer a variety of programming, which we think we're doing, mm -hmm. and uh, this year it'll prove 
that we'll see what happens. Um, mm -hmm. We need the community so much, and, and they've been so supportive, mm -hmm. and we want to give back to them. And the way we do that is by bringing in the entertainment that they want to see. Right, right. And the Broadway series is, very, is something that you all have kicked off recently, and you've got some big acts planned well into next year. Yes. Yes, um, I've actually booked the season. Right. Uh, we, we go by season instead of years, so okay. it's actually the 2004-2005 season. Uh -huh. And we have a fabulous, fabulous lineup. Uh, we, we have Grease coming up, as, as you already know, starring Chubby Checker. Oh, yeah. And, um, and he's from the Carolinas. That's right, So that's exciting. Absolutely. It's very exciting. And then we have Smokey Joe's Cafe, which is a review, and uh, mm -hmm. that's fun. Mm -hmm. We have... Um, what do we have? We have Chicago. Right. That's here for a week, and that's in 2005. Okay. And Thoroughly Modern Millie, which is still playing on Broadway. So mm -hmm. we're excited to bring something that's still out. You all had uh, uh, Cats, I believe. Cats uh, coming up. Are Absolutely. Coming up. It's full coming up Monty. in October. Right. And The Full Monty. I'm so excited about The Full Monty. Uh -huh. I've seen all these shows, and The Full Monty is still fairly new. Um, and it's definitely a show that you can bring the family to. Uh, so if anybody's heard any bad publicity, it's not. It's a fun show. It's a great show. It is a family show. Great. Definitely a family show. And Crazy for You, I think I saw Crazy for uh, You, one of my favorite all-time yeah. shows. It's coming in for a night. So we, that's an add-on. We added that on. Okay. Golly, Julia. Let's talk about this Sunday night's performance. We've got about five minutes. And okay. To think about everything that goes into getting a, a group like a gentleman like Maurice Williams and the Zodiacs and of course Billy Scott and the Prophets and the Embers that have been around for 40 plus years not only serving the Carolinas but up and down the coast I'm sure they've probably been down to Florida quite a bit for an event like this what made you all decide this was the place to have it? Who approached you? How, how did that all come together? The president of the Music Association, uh, Harry Turner, okay. and Hilda, and uh, B.J. Thomas right. all came to us, and this is something that they really wanted to do. They've done it in the past, right. um, but they felt they wanted to present it in a, a little bit more upscale presentation because they felt that their, their patrons were that. Mm -hmm. And so we agreed. We thought it would be a fabulous community support mm -hmm. uh, programming, and, and it is. It's wonderful. So mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're basically working together with them to put this on. Okay, great. So this is both the Palace Theater and Performing Arts Center, and, and the Chamber of Commerce is obviously Chamber very of interested Commerce. in They're, promoting They were it. very supportive in making it part of the Sun Fun Festival. As a Sun Fun Festival event. Yes. I've seen a lot of things over the Chamber of Commerce. Last week, uh, we were visiting with Lou Edgar, the general chairman, yep. last Thursday, and Brad Dean on Friday, and hearing all of them talk about so many exciting things, but to know that the palace has opened its doors this year. And, of course, to see you all decide on the splitting the net proceeds between, I believe, Habitat for Humanity yes. and yes. Beach Music Association International. How did you all decide on Habitat for Humanity? Well, we wanted to, as I said, we, we wanted to make this a community effort. The Music Beach Association International is, is, will benefit from it also. Habitat for Humanity, we have a local group here that does their own funding, so it's not from a, a, another region. Right. And we wanted to do something and support something that is actually local, that the money will stay here, and that's what it is. And so that's how we decided on it. Mm -hmm. We're very excited about that. We basically will just take our expenses out and the rest will go to Habitat and for the Music Beach right. Association. And if a viewer wanted to go ahead and buy tickets now, I mean, the great thing is to know that those net pre proceeds are going to the, the two charitable groups. Absolutely. Particularly Habitat for Humanity locally. And I think we'll talk to Harry Moore and, and Billy on Friday about possibly the Beach Music Legends coming down to help Habitat build a home. Yes, which would that be would huge, be exciting. Yes, which would be very, very exciting. exciting. Both to get some great press from that as well as recognize the commitment of giving back, as you say, to the community. When you think about some of the inspirations for you, Julie, I mean, the involvement, of course, getting in back in 87 full-time, I believe, with Barbara mm -hmm. Mann in the Performing Arts uh, Hall there, just the involvement in the industry and helping see, as you say, behind the scenes as well as what, what's out here in the lobby of facilities. What's it been like for you recognizing some of the inspirations? Who are some of those inspirations? Um, I, I think because of the fact that, well, my uncle was a big inspiration, but I think the fact that I started out as a patron mm -hmm. and all these things I was very interested in. And when I became very well into the industry, um, found out that just talking to people is like, well, what goes on back there? Mm -hmm. And just the, the questions. I mean, they're just yeah. they're normal questions, but right. but people like to know. Mm -hmm. They they like to be informed. Mm -hmm. 
very definitely. Yeah. Very definitely. What accomplishment over the last year do you think you're you're most proud, Julie? You think about the involvement of David King going ahead and buying the facility, making this home, not only for Spirit of the I'm Dance. I'm very but proud for convincing him to buy it. <laughs> Some days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Some days. Yes, that's right. Gray hairs or not. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And the fact that we... The, the fact that you we own the theater gives us that that possibility of right. bringing in whatever we want. Right. And right. so we take the risk and we bring it in. And if the community supports it, we'll keep it here. Mm -hmm. Julie, lastly, if you weren't the executive director, if you weren't currently the executive director of the Palace Theater and Performing Arts Center, what do you think you'd be doing? I'd be the director of marketing. Right. You, you definitely be uh, out be on the forefront. Bring, I'd definitely be involved in. somehow. You love Absolutely. the excitement of being here. Yes, Absolutely. I really would. Thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank you so much for having us. Definitely appreciate it. Stay tuned to more Carolina people with Julia Mays coming up next. Inspired by her uncle and recognized in the industry because of names like Richard Chamberlain or the Barber Man Performing Arts Hall, catch Julia Mays here this Sunday night, three beach music legends performing on stage at the Palace Theater at 530.